Tonight Show. Yes, folks, a brand new concept in television. The Deep Pan Takeaway TV Show with all your favorite toppings, sketches, pop stars, videos, all covered in a thin layer of crusty jokes, covered in a thick, gooey cast. Ten minutes in the oven, and it looks like this. Don't watch it all at once. Let's go to the news first. Up there. Good afternoon. This is the intergalactic update. Zelda has the first story. Thank you, Mamu. On planet Earth, concern with the poor state of cars these days has prompted the AA breakdown service to recruit a special new batch of repairmen. <laughs> Yesterday in Nottingham, the annual reunion of the Nobly Knee Society was severely disrupted by a sudden invasion of fleas. It was an exciting day today for Fantastic Glue-On Toupees Limited when they tried out their new super stick hairpiece. <laughs> Finally, sport. Marathons for the animal world are coming. Penguins in the Arctic can be seen here in training for next year's London Marathon. Oh, it's hard work, it's hard work. I'm going to be Jimmy Savile this year. Oh, oh, out of the way, out of the way. Are you pushing? You, you fool. Oh, it's cold. You're tuned to the satellite show. You stay with us. Why? Because if you don't, you might miss this. Oh, I'll try. now, to music in a more serious vein. Andropov Henislansky is now going to attempt to play the 1812 Overture on a xylophone. <laughs> Don't try that at home, folks. been writing to CD this week. Well, it's Sue Lawler from Southport, and she has suggested Sarah Green's head, Frank Bruno's body, and Madonna's legs. Just keep those letters coming in to the Satellite Show Pick and Mix, room E1208, BBC Television Center, Wood Lane, London, W12, HQT. Hey! I've got a nifty idea. While I finish off my lunch, why don't you check out Andropov Stanislansky? And this time, Stan is going to play the William Tell Overture on his violin. Take it away, Stan. <laughs> that was close, Stan. <laughs> Real close. And now, it's time to go over to Bob Hopeless for Name That Hat. Yes, Bob Hopeless here again with another round of Name That Thing. But first of all, we've got to find out where our contestants are, where they're scattered throughout the universe. Lock in the coordinates and beam them in. So welcome to Nothing, the game that starts with a letter and a series of pictures that may or may not begin with that letter. Our teams have to name those things that do and only those things that do. So it's buzz if it does and don't if it doesn't. All right, let's meet the teams. Let's have a big cheer for the greens, the blues and the reds. 
All right, let's get those fingers on the buzzer, get ready to play that thing. And this week's letter is the letter T. T for trumpet, all right, get the fingers on the buzzers. And could we have the first picture, please? Press the red team. Taxi. Taxi is right, I like the red team. Well done, next picture. Yes, the green team. Tiger. Tiger is right, I like the green team. Next picture. Yes, the red team. Leopards. Ha, 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 we got you. No, no, those are, uh, that's a Daimler, I think. No, a Jaguar, sorry, a Jaguar. Anyway, you, uh, you take your light away from the red team, so you're back to scratch, and let's have the next picture, please. Yes, the green team. Television. Television is right, light to the green team. Next picture, please. Yes, the green team. Trampolining. Trampoline is right, or trampolining, yes, a light to the green team. Next picture. Yes, the green team again. No, I think we buzzed there without knowing what it was. I'm going to have to take a light away, I'm afraid. Sorry, we lose that light. That's a traction engine. Next picture, please. Yes, the red team. Totem pole. Totem pole. I like the red team. Back on the map again. Next picture. Yes, the green team. Telephone. Telephone. You've got that light back. Well done. Next picture. Yes, the red team. Tattoo. Tattoo. Another light to the red team. Next picture. Yes, the blue team. Table tennis. Table tennis is right, a light to the blue team, and there goes the bell, that's the final picture, and let's have a look at the scores, and in third place, the blue team with one light, in second place, the red team with two lights, they get to take away some spectacular satellite show t-shirts, but the winners this week, and we'll be seeing them later on in the grand prize final, the green team with three lights, give them a big cheer! Bob will be back later. Still, everything you can't have. Ha. And now it's time to go over to our food expert, Nora Carrot. Well, this really is a fabulous place to eat. If you happen to be filthy rich like me. <laughs> just joshing, CD. Actually, you're just in time to see me pig out on a pudding, right? Garçon! Madame, what sweet would uh, Madame like? I think I'd quite like the chef's surprise. No, oui, madame. You have the culinary discretion of a gastronomic exponent. Oh, really? Is that good? No, I is. Yes, sacré bleu. The chef's surprise. Chocolate bavrois à l'orange. A delicate combination of chocolate from the tropics, creme from the Ardennes, and oranges from oh. Seville, oh. all treated in a truly sumptuous manner. Oh. Heated by the embers, yes, embers, of glowing chocolate and topped with the finest liqueurs that France has to offer. Très magnifique. Yes, but what's the surprise? We haven't got any. <laughs> Nearly put me off my food. Right, let's go back now to Andropov Stanislavski as he attempts to play The Flight of the Bumblebee on the piano. <laughs> Whoops, bit of a crash landing for the old bumblebee there. Let's have some zappy landings now with that groovy smoothie, Bruno Brooks and the Disco Dance Championships. Thank you, CD. Here we are back on Earth yet again with the good weather. If you remember last week here at Windsor Safari Park, we saw all the whales and the dolphins doing their backflips. Well, today we've come out in the open air yet again to see the camels who are off down there for their feed at the moment. It's the Satellite UK Junior Dance Championships in association with Rationale Kitchens, and we've seen some fantastic dancing. So now let's go back to the African theater tent. Over there. This is Claire Parkinson from London. Claire comes from a very big family. She has five brothers and sisters. I was walking home one day when I heard something come my way. Leaves were rustling, branches were breaking. Contestant number 26 is Lisa Wiley. This talented dancer sings as well. I ran into the house, he followed me in. He stopped and stared with the sentimental grin. I thought he'd kill me when he put me through his trance. But he held out his hand and asked me to dance. Big, bad, woofer. Never let scare you away. I know you want to 
steal your home away. Nicola Lynch from Dundee is our next contestant, and she loves sports and all forms of dancing. I say we're very impressed with the costumes. Finally, contestant number 28, Martin Jackson. Martin told me earlier this week that he likes keeping fit, he likes art, and he can combine the two with his dancing. of our four dancers in group seven and now of course the winner with a, a bit of luck going through to the semi-final well i can tell you that the winner is of group seven number 27 nicola lynch age 11. <laughs> well done nicola congratulations see you next week for the next heat and now it's time to do something totally stupid hi brainless ones Wanna do something really stupid? And why not do all your homework in French? Except for French, that is! Boy, I just love being really stupid! That, that was completely, completely stupid. stupid. And now, we visit a cold and lonely place, devoid of human life. <laughs> no, not there! There! the moon. But just how cold and lonely is it down there? We send our reporter Arnold Dingobot to find out. Here is his report. Hello. Here I am on the moon. The moon is a totally lifeless world. For many centuries, mankind thought there might possibly be life here and even imagined that small green men might occasionally come down to earth to visit. The idea is, of course, ridiculous. For one thing, the moon has no water whatsoever, and life simply cannot exist without water. <laughs> the other important point, of course, is the fact that the moon has no atmosphere. <laughs> there can be no life where there is no air to breathe. <laughs> so there you have it. No air, no water, no life. Winners of round one with us, Christopher and Emma, and they've got pens and paper and they're going to try and work out this week's seven letter word puzzle. But first of all, of course, they have to get those seven letters. So get ready with those fingers on the buzzer, get ready to play in that thing, and can we have our first picture, please? Eskimo. Eskimo, correct. Not even back to real Eskimo, but a friend of ours called Linda dressed up as an Eskimo, but never mind, well done. Correct, next picture. Yes. Milk. Milk, right down the letter M. E and M so far. Next picture. Yes. Eggs. Eggs, right down E again. Next picture. Radio. No, what's on top? Aerial. Aerial, right down the letter A. Next picture. Yes. Lollipops. Lollipops, right down the letter L. Next picture. Rattler. Rattler, rattle, yes, right down the letter R. Next picture. 
dolls. Dolls is right. The letter D, and that's your final seventh letter. So in the time remaining, try and work out that seven-letter word. And while they're doing that, let's have a look at the selection of prizes on the satellite show Prize Tower. We've got a selection of videos down there. We've got, for a five-letter word, there's a Garfield wall clock there. Big cuddly toy here. There's a ghost spooker. Proton pack for six letters. And this week's star prize is a stereo cassette recorder. Five seconds left. Four, three... Two, one. Time's up. And tell me, have you solved that seven-letter word puzzle? Yeah, emerald. Emerald is the right answer. A big cheer for the green team. Well done, the star prize for only the second time in the series. Let's get the star prize down if I can. Where is it? Here. Oh, dear, the cassette player. Here it is. There's, there's another one of these here somewhere. But there you are. Hang on to that just now. Christopher and Emma, well done. Give them a big cheer. The star prize winner. And now, something completely obvious. Pay attention, satelliters, for this week's completely obvious fact. It is this. Telephones cannot fly. <laughs> Live and learn. Stupid. Stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. Okay, time to check the coordinates and beam up my special interview guest, Miss Kylie Minogue. <laughs> Kylie Minogue. Whoops, better luck this time. Fingers crossed. Whoop. Oh, that's more like it. Yeah, it's How are you, Manu? Excellent. Good day. Good day. How are you? I'm not bad. How are you? Good. I'm just fine. Fine. Now, Good. I'm going to keep this very fast because I know you're pretty busy at the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you're here, there, and everywhere, and now you're here in the satellite. So, I know. <laughs> uh, so what's happening now in the in the near future? Near future for me. Um, well, I'm going to New York and doing some promotion there. <gasps> yeah. And then I'm back home to Australia to do some promotion there. Then I come back to England and the premiere for my movie, The Delinquents, is on 5th of December. So I'll be back in London for that. Great. Then home for Christmas. Your mum comes from Wales, is that right? Yeah. yeah so do you still have any relatives there? Yeah, I saw them when I was doing the road show. And I was in Swansea. I saw all the rallies there. So it was good. Uh -huh. Now, I understand you also uh, went to Madame Tussauds and kind of met yourself. <laughs> yes. Uh, that must have been a pretty weird experience. Yeah, I screamed. You screamed? <laughs> yeah, well, I saw my head on the block first. It wasn't on my body. It was just sitting there. Well, it must be pretty scary. Mm. So, um, now listen, you're, you're 21 years old. Yeah. You're a, a record-breaking TV star, a record-breaking pop star. I mean... You know, the film opens in a couple of weeks and you're going to be a movie star. I mean, about the only thing you haven't done is to fight Mike Tyson. I mean, what's <laughs> left to do? I uh, could see us in the ring. <laughs> what? There's lots left to do. I can do theatre. Um, I mean, every film is a different film, so that's really new. I haven't written my own songs. I haven't produced anything myself. So there's a lot, a lot uh, of avenues that are open for me. And I intend to explore them all too, which is great, and just learn more about both industries, both singing and acting. Uh -huh. I have a few ambitions outside of entertainment because in this industry you never know what's going to happen, you don't know what's around the corner, so you have to keep your options open, I guess. And so I'm interested in business, I'd like to become a business tycoon, I think right. that would be good. <laughs> right. Whether it's a shop or a chain of shops or, I don't know, some kind of business venture. Right. Now, I know you're a busy lady, so I'm going to say goodbye now. It's been a pleasure to have you here on the satellite. It's uh, been an experience, I can tell you. <laughs> well, we like to think so. So, uh, just before you go, why don't you introduce your new video? Okay, well, here it is. It's never too late. And now, by popular request, not popular with me, we are going back to give... Andropov Stanislavski, another chance. 
He has the music. He has the sticks. He has the kettle drums. What can possibly go wrong? Wow. That's what I call playing flat out. Okay. Time now to hide behind the sofa as Captain Plughole and the Boy Plunger embark on a brand new adventure. Welcome, galaxy followers, to another fine story about the two most fearsome superheroes since Noddy and Big Ears, Captain Plughole and Boy Plunger, are two heroes as they return in the exciting, nay, thrilling story, The Search for the Golden Tap. Our two heroes are about to sit out once again on another superhero adventure. For the purpose of explaining this new story, let us go back into time four million years when Captain Plugo was Baby Plugo. We join the Plugo family as Mummy Plugo and Daddy Plugo try to explain to their dimwit of a son, soon to be Captain Plugo, that danger is on its way. You see, son, a long time ago the Earth was inhabited by the Bog people. But then, the Plonk people from the planet Plonk got rid of them, and they are now threatening to take over the entire universe. We are the only people left on planet Earth now. The Plonk people are not far away now, Daddy Drainpipe. Then we must leave Earth at once. I have hidden the golden tap of our people, which cannot leave this planet, but from which all power flows. It must never fall into the wrong hands. Whoever has the golden tap will have unlimited power. But not for another four million years, by which time our son will have become a man. How will we know where to look for it? I have written the instructions on how to find it again on this magical round tablet, which I will now break in three pieces and scatter through space and time. Now they are safe. Sorry, pal. Well, almost safe. Our hope for the future lies with our offspring here, Baby Puggle, the most precious thing we possess, the one being that is always uppermost in our thoughts. Now, fetch the space spikes. So, how did you come to remain on Earth, Captain? They peddled off and forgot about me. And what about me? Ah, yes, you. The people from the planet Plonk were divided into two groups. The right people and the wrong people. The right people from Plonk were good, and the wrong people from Plonk were bad. I made friends with one of the good people of Plonk. Great asteroidal ancestors. So you're telling me that yes, I am... Yes, you are a right Plonker. <laughs> but while they were talking, the evil leader of all that's bad, Commander Cosmos, was listening. Now I know everything. <laughs> And I know that she knows everything. And I know that they don't know that I know that they don't know what happens next week. And I know that you don't know either. So, don't miss next week's nerve-tingling episode of The Search for the Golden Tap. Then, you'll be in the know. Well, that's it, folks. That's all there is. The Deep Pan Takeaway Satellite Show was brought to you by me, CD. Tune in next week, and we will deliver another one direct to your TV. No, take it away. I ordered pepperoni. 